Why isn't financial literacy taught in schools? Well, I actually don't think it should be. So we're gonna talk about some specific ways that you can bring it and bring the education and bring the financial literacy because it needs to be taught, it's a life skill. Not just a school skill, in my opinion, it's a life skill. So specifically, I want to talk about just the historical evolution of schooling and why it is the way that it is. Then I want to talk about the systematic design since 1933 of creating employees versus entrepreneurs, although everyone up until that point was an entrepreneur. They might have been the merchant. They might have been the you know blacksmith. They might have been the person who sold the horses, you know, had a chicken farm, whatever. They contributed to the community. Everyone was entrepreneurs prior to 1933. It's fascinating history. And then last, the practical steps today that you get to take to actually supplement the education that is out there and then how to get in the right lane. The lane is critical. You've got to pick the right lane. There's a rich lane, there's a poor lane. Which one have you chosen? So first, let's understand the evolution of schooling. The Perusian models have come from a very, you know, logical, we're going to teach English, we're going to teach math, we're going to teach science, you know, the course, just basic knowledge skills that honestly every human on the planet should get just below their belt, right? And then as you advance into schooling, then you get more, you know, logic, you get critical thinking, and as you really advance, then you're going to learn more about team building and how to advance, you know, conversations and critical thinking skills. So schooling is interesting and it's designed very specifically to support employees, which is kind of my next point. In 1933, like I said earlier, like this whole industrial age, let's create employees. People will work for companies instead of be entrepreneurs. Look, they're going to have a benefit plan. They can have the certainty of a paycheck. And that to the entrepreneurs who lived like this in cash flow looked like a great model. Then later on, the 401k was added, and then it just stuck worldwide, where everybody goes to school, if you can get to school. I know I gotta say there's outliers, because when I went to Africa, like what we were teaching in our classroom was more significant, unfortunately, than a lot of them, or they just didn't have access because they had to go to work to help the family. That still exists in third world countries, and believe me, that is a real thing. But for most people, right, in kind of in an established world, you go to school for 13 years, kindergarten to, to you know 12th grade, you might go on to get a bachelor's or a master's, or a PhD or medical school, whatever you do, but it's like the all-American dream, right? Go to school, get good grades, go get a job for 40 years, retire, get a benefit package, and voila. That's 1960s and 70s, folks. Welcome to uh, Ward and June Cleaver. And there were several points in our history that blew that out of the water. So if you look at every economic downturn, and I'll look at the, those that have been significant in my generation, right? Moving into 2000s, everything, you know, all technology was going to fall apart, the world was going to collapse. Then you move forward and you, you live through eight, nine, and 10. You live through the most devastating mortgage crisis, which caused a real estate collapse. And that affected the world because those mortgage bonds were sold to huge firms across the world and everyone got hit. It was a global recession initiated by mortgage products here in the United States that was fascinating. So again, how do you get out of it? You become more entrepreneurial. You learn to make some more money instead of get a job. Then you go forward and you say, well, what did this pandemic do? <laughs> Nothing could have been more pivotal to say, come be an entrepreneur, or at least take on a version of that. So I teach a thing called living corporate life. It's hugely immersed in financial literacy, and it's in so critical for you to lean in. And yes, it's great if you want that life. I did that life, right? I have a master's degree. My son just got two bachelors and a master's degree. My daughter's going to go on and get probably two bachelor's degrees as well, maybe a master's. Who knows where she's going to end up? She's only 17 right now. I like formal schooling from the standpoint of structure, and as an adult, it's a, it's a a clear, safer line to transition away from living at home into that world. That's up to you. My opinion doesn't matter to you making that decision because along this side, my kids also had entrepreneurial ventures and they still do. At 18, they got an LLC for their birthday. I encourage you to like get serious about this. So my son's going on to be a CPA, but he has LLCs and he's going to operate through them. He's not employed effective immediately in <laughs> 2024 by my companies anymore, right? My company pays his company, right? Same with my daughter. So we're in that, those relationships of growing into an entrepreneurial and employee life. So that's what should be taught. So why isn't it taught in schools? It shouldn't be. I just don't think it's there. It's not where the experts are. It's not part of their any core curriculum. Is personal finance sometimes taught? I remember in 10th grade, I think I had how to write a check and how to balance a checkbook. And that's about as far as they got. Now, Sharon Lecter, who's like my financial mom, has done an amazing job of getting financial literacy. I think three hours is required in Arizona schools to graduate high school. But again, the curriculums, hmm, and who teaches it? Hmm, where's 
the quality kind of depends if the teacher wants to teach it or they're being forced to teach it because that could just be whatever. So I believe this YouTube channel is your school for financial literacy and knowledge across all of it. I am your school. This should be where you are. I'm designing this for five years old and up, family financial literacy, family friendly. So you need to subscribe to the channel, click the notification, grab the journal for you and every family member. It's in the description below. And the journal's designed to say what day, what video, what was the topic and what did you learn? And then what are you going to do about it? So together over the course of a year, you and each of your family members or your business partners start creating a business financial literacy journal of actions, ways that you're thinking as far as books to read, like read Think and Grow Rich every year, read My Millionaire Maker every year because you change every year, read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, read some of these amazing money books of people that are in that lane. So let's talk about lanes. There's the rich and the poor, right? And you say, well, how does that work? Well, the rich lane is one I got introduced to by Bob Proctor. Well, actually I'll back up. 17 years old, Dennis Whateley gave me the book, Think and Grow Rich. Then I was introduced to Bob Proctor and then you saw the rest of my career. If you don't know it, I have met all the greats. I know Jack Canfield. I know Mark Victor Hansen. I know Robert Allen. I know Rod LeGrand. You name him. I have worked with them in some capacity or been their business partner. So through that, I was highly mentored and guided into who I've become today. I did not just arrive because I wanted to be a farm girl from Nebraska doing this. I was highly guided, highly mentored into achieving what I've achieved. And thank God for mentors. Thank God for their workshops. Thank God for their books. Because that's what it takes to be financial literate. It's reading, it's activities, it's being engaged. It's treating this YouTube channel like an engaged, active channel, not just something you're listening to kind of quietly. You're going to create an action out of this learning and that creates greater activity. There's a huge amount of team building and team learning because you're going to be leading your wealth team to the legacy you want to create. And if you're really young and say, well, I don't have a legacy yet, you don't have to. I just know when I got pregnant with Logan, knew I'd be a single mom, I wanted to change generational wealth. I don't think it should be the surprise basket at the end of your life because then kids just fight about it. So why do that? Educate your kids and bring them on the journey with you. Integrate your life. So again, if you haven't done my 21 day integrate your life challenge, grab the link below and come join us. Like get into this life of the lane of the rich. So that's again, think and grow rich, Bob Proctor, Robert Kiyosaki, Sharon Lecter. We teach all those principles. Raymond Aaron's in that category. Ron LeGrand's in that category. There's so many amazing people that are in the lane of the rich, creating you to be wealthier. You don't live within your means. You grow your means, right? If you don't like your financial situation, then change it. I'll give you every tool, every how to change it. But you have to do exactly what I say, not the part you want to do. Or just stay in the lane of the safe, out of debt, very little opportunity for you because you probably will never get accredited. You probably always have just the highest taxes you can pay. So you'll stay safe and stable, overpay taxes, not have a lot of investment choices, but you're out of debt. And it's amazing how many people want to live that life. So that's fine. But then don't say over here, it's like, say you want to be fat and skinny. Which one? You're going to be healthy or not healthy? You're going to be rich, you're going to be poor because there's a lane. There's a behavior that goes behind, right? That consistent behavior of what it is, it compounds. So if you want to be poor, that's consistent behavior is going to compound. If you want to be rich, that consistent behavior is going to compound. So some additional practical steps that I want to share with you, like if you're a student, you're in the classroom, what can you do? Well, it's a lot of similar things that I did when I was at Chevron and a job is I thought, well, what if this wasn't a job? What if this was my business and buying business work for that business? And I treated myself as an entrepreneur, even though I was employed. So as a student, I want you to start thinking, what is it that you could do? You could start your own company. If your parents won't help you, I'll help you again, be here on this YouTube channel. I'll continue to teach you how to do it. Start a 21st century lemonade stand, right? I talk about when I put more cash in your pocketbook, which means how do you make an extra 500 to 1,000? How do you design your own monthly income? You can do so many things from nannying, dog walking, mowing. I mean, we live in the Lake Tahoe area. You can do snow removal. There's so many things you can do, any home maintenance, you know, whatever you like to do. Help somebody cook, help somebody run errands, right? A lot of people that are older can't drive or don't want to drive. Go get their groceries for them. Go get their dry cleaning. Go do things with them. So lots of ways that you can generate income if you're digital. I mean, be a videographer like this. I have somebody filming me for this YouTube channel. Do photographs. Help somebody get a Facebook page up. Help somebody get a Facebook ad or a TikTok ad or Instagram ad. See, you teens are so rich with extra skills. You know, when my son was going through his accounting and finance school, he would do tax preparation. He can't do a return because he wasn't certified, but he could do some tax prep. He could help people out. He helped me out. He did a lot of travel. So he loved booking travel. So he does that for our whole family now. And that's his contract. My company works for his company and he books all of our travel and manages our credit card points and all of those things. What do you like to do? Start a 21st century lemonade stand. Start building a team and thinking about a team because you're not going to do this all by yourself. Even though your traditional schooling says you're out there by yourself. And if you look side to side, you're cheating. As an entrepreneur, we want you looking side to side. What's your competition doing? What are other people doing? How do they do it? And then you make a decision for you and your life. So treat it as a way of holding yourself accountable to a higher standard. I always say when you're really on a wealth building journey and a business building 
marketing journey, you know, you're competing against yourself, really not your competition. Your goal is to get the most market share, but to do your personal best. This whole year is about the next level of customer excellence and, and excellent just content delivery. And those are huge goals for us in 2024. They've always been goals, but again, every year just changes. The economy changes. The recession is real, folks. It's real. The interest rates are here to stay for a while. Inflation is going to stay because wages inflated with them. So you can't take away the wage, which means those prices are going to stick. Get used to it. Make more money. So the final practical steps I really want you to consider are just holding yourself accountable. Set goals every year. What's your goal? How are you going to achieve it? What am I telling you on the YouTube channel? Set up some money rules. I don't care how old you are. Like what is your debit card going to be used for? What's your credit card going to be used for? After you're done listening to this channel, you're going to put your debit cards away and use them for like emergency only because they comes like there's a whole lot of reasons. Again, any of these topics, search them in my search bar. I've got playlists and playlists and playlists of all sorts of topics to get you in the right thinking around what I'm talking about. See, your ultimate goal of financial freedom is a three to five year millionaire plan. It doesn't matter how old you are. It matters what you do. It matters who you think. It matters who you're around. Make this world your classroom, right? This is my financial family is the big table in the community I built. And everyone leans in here to have money and business conversations because out there it's not taught. So you got to lean in, find your tribe. We'd love to be your tribe and help you become a three to five year millionaire. You can do it even if you're a student. I hope that gave you some sense of why schools don't teach, how you can make your own classroom of learning, right? I was 17. I was going to university and had Bob Proctor as a mentor at the same time. Can you imagine that? Like, woo, that was fun. And then as a student, just immerse yourself in this content of becoming a learner. Be here every day. Again, click that notification button and keep an action journal of what are you going to do and what are you going to learn? And if you can, raise your hand and say, hey, Laurel, I want to be on your podcast. You never know whose story I'll pick up and whether you qualify or not. Anyway, whatever you decide to do, I need you to go to askloral.com, ask questions, make requests, stay connected to us, and grab two tickets to my millionaire intensive so you can learn what corporate life truly is and how you can start it legally at 18 years old on your birthday. Hope you have a great day. Talk to you tomorrow.